Hi there everybody and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today we are going to be analyzing the company Adobe, a company that I've actually analyzed here in the channel before, though it has been a while and I've only ever done it one time, which is fairly surprising, I don't know why I haven't done it more. And seeing that their earnings are actually coming out on Thursday after close, no better time to do it right now. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. Coming right into the calculator, guys, we got the ticker symbol of ADBE for Adobe, market cap of $178.1 billion, PE of 37.44, which is actually fairly expensive. I don't remember what it was the first time I analyzed this company, but even at 37.44, it is still way expensive, guys. It's significantly expensive. So seeing that the current share price is $376.92, essentially $377, this still to drop a big big amount in accordance to this PE right however the PE is only one metric that only tells us a little piece of the story we're gonna take a look at other metrics come up with a discounted free cash flow calculation discount that back to today and see what we would actually like to pay based on their future shares outstanding and of course their free cash flow now this company does not pay out a dividend which means that all of this free cash flow their five-year average being 4.5 billion is going into themselves to pay down debt, to buy back shares, to grow, and to make acquisitions. Coming now to some fundamentals. So then of course, net income five years ago of 1.7 billion to one year ago of 4.8 billion. That's an increase of 185%, which is really, really solid. And not only that, guys, they have been increasing this income within the past five years as well. Now, the one anomaly is that from three years ago to two years ago, they went up a really big amount, pretty much going from $3 billion to $5.2 billion. Explanation. COVID happened two years ago. Adobe makes a lot of software that has to do with like Photoshop, video editing, and because people were at home, a lot of people took up hobbies and started doing YouTube videos, which involved having this kind of software, which explains why they did so much money in 2020 and even in 2021. I don't necessarily know if they will continue to do this into the future because a lot of people are going back to work and they won't have the time to be making any more videos or essentially their hobbies will have to take some kind of slowdown and seeing that Adobe is, I believe it through a subscription base, they might actually cancel so we're gonna have to wait and see to see how this actually affects their net income coming now to the free cash flow the lifeblood of the company and the most important metric guys because this is the one that companies use to pay out the dividend if they pay out the dividend to buy back shares to make acquisitions and to pay down their debts so really really important we want this thing to be one increasing and number two to be consistently increasing within the past five years. And as you can see, when it comes to Adobe, this is looking beautiful. Five years ago of 2.7 billion to one year ago of 6.9 billion, increase of 152% with an average five-year free cash flow, as we just saw, of $4.5 billion. And on top of that, guys, very nice consistent growth when it comes to their free cash flow. Looking now at the revenue, we see a really nice consistent growth as well. Five years ago of 7.3 billion to one year ago of 15.8 billion, increase of 116.2%. So all in all, when it comes to the profit metrics, the only one that's kind of iffy and it's not even that bad is essentially the net income. And it's not even that bad, guys, right? It is still increasing, not as consistent as the other two, but it is still increasing. And it really doesn't seem to be much of an outlier when it comes to the net income. Taking a look now at some balance sheet numbers, we got the total assets and liabilities. Subtracting these two gives us whether or not the company is able to weather a recession storm or even just bad times in general. You want this number to be going up, this difference essentially to be going up because this stops a company from going bankrupt. The more debt a company has, the likelihood of a bankruptcy the company will get into. Currently, they're at $13.8 billion and also to their credit guys they have been increasing this difference over the past five years which is again really really good average total assets is around 22 billion dollars average liability is around 10.2 billion dollars and doing this difference we get around 11.7 billion dollars coming now to the metric that companies tend to fail the shares outstanding companies tend to issue shares without saying anything mainly because it is no fault to them especially by the way if they don't issue a dividend because if they don't issue a dividend then they really aren't in any crosshairs as to them actually losing cash flow so companies that don't pay out the dividend tend to issue shares however 
Adobe, not the case. Five years ago, a 491.3 million shares to today, a 472 million shares. On the five year, that is a decrease of almost 4%. And from the previous year to the current year, they bought back around 0.63%, which was from 475 million shares one year ago to 472 million shares today. And lastly, they currently have $2.7 billion in cash equivalents with an average cash equivalents of around $2.9 billion. Now time to make some assumptions, low, median, high using three different factors, predicted share buyback, revenue growth, and the required rate of return. For the revenue growth guys, I like to use Seeking Alpha's growth tab, looking at the revenue growth year over year, the revenue growth forward, making an assumption within those two numbers, a conservative assumption essentially. Because we do not know what the future will be, you want to take into account the worst case scenarios even at the highest assumptions. For the predicted share buyback, we just saw the shares of standing graph, we're going to use that as a reference, and for the required rate of return, I like to keep a flat 10% to match the S&P 500. Now, for the low assumption, let's say a revenue growth of 10%, predicted share buyback of 2%, this comes out to be $247.94. For the median assumption, revenue growth of 12%, predicted share buyback of 3%, this is $267.55. And for the highest assumption, revenue growth of 14%, predicted share buyback of 4%, this comes out to be $288.46. Now, those numbers were just based off of a target share price, not adjusting for debt. Adjusting for debt, this actually comes up a significant amount, meaning that they actually have more cash on hand than they do debt, which is really, really good. So, doing this same exact math, the current share price, the target share price for the low assumption now is $501.80. For the median assumption, it is $541.09. And for the high assumption, it is $582.95. Now, I personally like to also add a margin of safety into these target share prices adjusting for debt of 5, 10, and 15%. And in doing so, this puts me between $426.53 to $476.71 for the low assumption. For the median assumption, it is $459, essentially $460. Let's just round up all the way up to $514. And for the high assumption, it is between $495.51 to $553.81. Guys, the current share price is $376.92. So it really just depends as to what you want to look at. If you are taking a look at the target share prices and you believe that these are the correct answers, then you actually might want to wait until this thing actually falls up by around $100 or so. However, adjusting for debt, well, the company's price actually goes up a significant amount by around $300 or so, right? So now pretty much everything is looking like it's a buy with target share prices of around $450 to $583. So it really just depends what you believe as well as guys, what your assumptions are. Because as I say in every single video, every investment is the present value of all future cash flow, and this is not financial advice. All of the graphs that you just saw is using public information, and these numbers that you see right here are based off of these assumptions. For example, let's say that you believe Adobe won't grow at 10%. Let's say that you believe that they're actually going to grow at like 2%, and that they're gonna start issuing shares guys at like five percent well doing so now the target share price is 175 dollars and 77 cents and even the target share price adjusting for debt now is 357 dollars so right then and there for all of them essentially you will want to wait for the company to fall so again that is why every investment is the present value of all future cash flow and i'm not telling you guys what to buy I'm giving you guys this calculator available for free in order for you guys to make your own assumptions and seeing where companies that you like fall under what you may actually want to buy. Because I don't know the future, you guys don't know the future, the only thing we can do is predict the future, make assumptions about the future, how things will be 10, 20, 30 years down the line. So essentially, you want to make conservative assumptions to see what you would pay for a company down the line today. That is why, again, I have this calculator available for free. Anybody can have it. All you got to do is go to my calculator's video. The link is in the description. You guys can have this one, the book value one for companies that don't have capital expenditures, and the REIT one for real estate investment trusts, as well as a dividend tracking sheet, all for free. All I'm asking for in return, guys, is like, subscribe, comment, and just help me grow my channel. That's about it. Thank you so much for everybody who has subscribed, and hopefully I can convince all of you guys that haven't subscribed yet to subscribe because... I'm giving you guys free content and I'm giving you guys a free pro four free products for just five seconds of your time. Hit that like, hit the subscribe, 
hit that bell, and of course, tell your friends that want to learn how to invest using a process, especially in a market that is this volatile. All in all, guys, Adobe is a company I actually consider to buy and put into a growth portfolio, believe it or not. I don't know if I'm still going to do that eventually. Maybe not a growth portfolio, but essentially just a growth pie in M1 Finance, just, just for me. But Adobe is a company I am considering buying because I think that people will continue to buy their products. I mean, Adobe is a, a lot of people use Premiere to edit YouTube videos and Photoshop to make thumbnails. So, you know, I honestly think that Adobe will continue to grow into the future. And their fundamentals are pretty much in line with what I like to see. That pretty much is it for this video. Like if you like, comment, subscribe. As I said, you guys can follow me on my new tech sites. All link in the description below, as well as the Let's Play channel. Link is also in the description. So with that said, peace out. Be on the lookout for the next stock analysis a video.